guys, it's your girl, Ashley Kirkwood with the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast, where we teach you how to start at the top of the speaking market instead of working your way up from the bottom. During this show, you will hear solo episodes from me, where I'll show you how I have landed and negotiated five and six figure speaking contracts and licensing deals. You'll also hear from our amazing guests who have grown enormous speaking businesses by utilizing sales and marketing principles that work. If you want to grow your speaking business, listen to this podcast. And then afterwards, head on over to ashleynicolekirkwood.shop and grab my book, Speak Your Way to Cash, How to Start at the Top of the Speaking Market Instead of Working Your Way Up from the Bottom. Ready to dive in? Let's go. Hey, y'all. What's up to the Speak Your Way to Cash family? It's Ashley Kirkwood back again with another podcast episode. But this time, guys, I am actually going to let you listen in to a live video that I recorded. Now, if you're listening to this live video on the podcast and you're like, oh, I want to join your next live. I want to ask you questions. I want to be able to get feedback about my business. Then you have to follow me on Instagram at The Ashley Nicole Show and make sure you're following the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook page. All right. Make sure you're following the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook page because that's where I go live. I also sometimes go live in the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group. But enough about that. Even though you may have missed it live, you're about to hear it again. So listen into this live episode and let me know what you think. You can always send me an email to Ashley at SpeakYourWayToCash.com. Let's listen in. Hello, hello. It's Ashley Kirkwood with Speak Your Way to Cash. I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. I have not been live in a minute. For those of you listening to this on the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast, hello, hello. I'm so excited to chat with you guys today. We have a really good topic today. Now, here's what we're discussing. Here's what we're discussing. We are going to be discussing the fact that time feeds anything you feed it. And what I really want to talk to you all about is like, what are you feeding time? What are you feeding time? Before I get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Ashley Kirkwood. I run a company called Speak Your Way to Cash. We have two core audiences. We help coaches, experts, thought leaders, and individuals who are looking to grow their speaking or consulting businesses to grow that business through sales and marketing strategies geared towards selling to corporations, colleges, associations, and nonprofits. We also have our own corporate clients who we help develop internal and external communication practices using our proprietary love method of communication. And we help companies build better leaders through the currency of confidence. So no matter where you're at in that sphere, that is who we help. That is what we do. That is what I love to do. And really, when I think about my mission on this earth, I was telling someone this yesterday, the reason we train coaches, consultants, thought leaders, experts to land corporate clients is because I know from being a woman, particularly being a woman of color in corporate America, that the worst position you can be in is giving all of your power away to one entity and letting them control what you do day in and day out. So if you learn sales, if you learn marketing, if you learn how to create your own income potential, you're able to take some of that power back and it shields you from some of the stuff that you just can't avoid when you look like me in this room. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just wanted to throw that out there. Like women need to be able to have conversations about money, about sales, about marketing, about the ways in which they provide value to the world. And there needs to be some type of exchange for that. We help you to do that at Speak Your Way to Cash. Now, what we're going to be talking about today, time feeds anything you feed it. Time feeds anything you feed it. What are you feeding time? I had the pleasure um, at this point, was it last week or was it the week before? Time is moving so fast. I had the pleasure to speak alongside a few extraordinary speakers, one of which being James Clear, the author of Atomic Habits. And his keynote was life-changing for me. And there were some other keynotes that were also equally, if not more so, as life-changing. But one of the things I love that he talked about and that I wanted to share with you all is this concept of feeding time. And what he said was, anything, time will magnify anything you feed it. And so if you're not careful and you're feeding time, fear, doubt, you're not moving towards your goals, all time will do is magnify that. Conversely, or on the other hand, if you are feeding time good habits, growth, consistency, positivity, time can also magnify that. So what I want you all to think about on this Friday is what are you going to feed time? For us, Fridays are a lot about follow-up, solidifying ourselves and setting myself up for a really good weekend <laughs> and setting next week up for a really good week. Sometimes we do team trainings on this week. Mondays, I'm typically talking to my corporate clients and asking them about how we're going to work together over the next quarter or so. So time is going to feed whatever you feed it. 
time is going to feed whatever you feed it. Two things I want to discuss, habit and environment, habit and environment. So when you think about your habits, a lot of you are listening to this or you're in my community because you want to grow your businesses. If you're a corporate leader and you're listening to this, you want to grow your teams. Well, here's the thing. Good habits help to achieve those goals. A lot of the folks that I've interacted with over the years, we have over a thousand paying clients in the Speak Your Ready Cash coaching community. One of the things that we see time and time again is the easiest part of working with us is setting the goal. The easiest part of working with us is setting the goal. And here's what I mean by that. And how many of you have done this? If you've done this, put goal in the chat. Beginning of the year, you sit down with yourself or those of you that have teams, you sit down with your team and you set a goal for the year. We wanna make X amount of dollars. We wanna impact X amount of people. That's the easiest part. That is literally where easy ends. <laughs> that is literally where easy ends. And if you've done that and you're watching this live, just drop goal in the chat because that is literally the easiest part of the transformation. What becomes more difficult is you determining what you're going to endure in order to reach that goal. And I've talked about this a little bit before, but I want to share it again. When you're setting your goals, I want you to also set and think about what am I willing to endure to reach that goal? When that feeling of overwhelm comes over you, what are you willing to do to overcome that emotion to achieve your goal? When that feeling of I don't have time for this or I don't feel like doing it, what are you going to do in order to overcome that feeling to reach your goals. So what I find is that often people spend a lot of time and get really excited about setting the goal, but they don't give any thought to what they're willing to overcome in order to reach the goal. Think about that. What are you, if you're taking notes, take this note down. What am I willing to endure in order to reach the goal? What negative feelings am I willing to endure in order to reach the goal? What emotions am I willing to overcome in order to reach the goal? What people am I willing to say, hey, you got to hold off in order to reach the goal. What television shows am I willing to give up in order to reach the goal? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? We have a great question here. We have a great question. I love questions. So drop your questions in the chat. Demaya, what's up? What's up, Demaya? The question, I totally agree. But how do you defeat? This is such a good question. Give me some good questions this morning, please. Okay. I totally agree. But how do you defeat decades? worth of negative thinking and sedentary actions and reverse course into my dreams, but scary actions. Woo! Good question. Good question. How many of you, let's give Demaya some, some credit here for asking this super powerful, super vulnerable question. If you've ever felt like this, if you feel like you need to overcome decades of negative thinking in order to reach your goals, if you feel like you have to overcome decades of being sedentary in order to reach your goal, put me too. Let's show him that he's not alone. Put me too. Let's show that we're not alone. Here's the thing. And let me tell you, let me tell you, I'm seeing Me Too's all on Instagram. I'm seeing some Me Too's come in through um, Facebook as well. Just so you know, here's the thing. The beautiful thing, the good news is you can change the way you think, but it's an active process. The first thing you need to do is identify negative thoughts that come up in the moment. And I'm going to give you an example of this. I'm going to give you an example of this. Right now, we're in the middle of hosting um, a Speak Your Way to Cash Summit. It's next week. You, it's totally, it's no cost to attend. You can upgrade to a VIP option, but it's no cost to attend. www.speakyourwaytocashsummit.com. One of the people we're interviewing is Brittany Sherelle, who's a mindset coach and strategist. She's fabulous. Here's what I will say. I'm hosting this summit. It's the first time we've ever hosted an online summit. Now, I consider myself a confident person. I am a confident person because I've worked on that over the course of my life. However, when doing something for the first time, there's always this little like ignorant thought in the back of my mind that's like, I don't know if you could do this. What if people don't show up? What if they don't stay the whole time? What if they're not the right folks? What like there's all these negative thoughts. In the moment that I have those thoughts, I pause, identify what those negative thoughts are, and I will physically write down the opposite. And I will say out loud the opposite. People will show up. People will enjoy the summit. People will have their lives change. People will like what I have going on. But let me tell you this. In my opinion, <laughs> we have 70,000 thoughts per day. For most people, the vast majority of those thoughts are negative. 70,000 thoughts per day. For most people, the vast majority of those thoughts are negative. You don't even when you practice being positive, even when you practice putting positivity in the world, even when you practice acting in spite of your fears, it doesn't mean you won't have them. It means that you need to practice moving forward through them. 
And one thing that we've done is we've redefined what resistance means to, I redefine what resistance means to me. When you start feeling resistance, listen to me on this, Demaya, there are things in your life that you know you should be doing, but you feel resistance towards doing. It seems like when you sit down at your desk, no matter how hard you try, you can't send the email you know you need to send. You know you need to be putting out content, but no matter how hard you try, you write content, you erase it, you can't put it out because you start thinking, I don't know if people are going to listen to me. So you just walk, you leave your desk. You have to start practicing moving through the resistance because the moment that you work through that resistance and you do the thing that is scaring you, you do the thing that is holding you back, what you tell your brain is, it's not that bad. Our brains are set up to pr to keep us from danger. So first of all, realize this. It's not your fault that your brain is telling you to stay away from, from zones that aren't comfort. Everybody loves a comfort zone. The reason we write about magnificent people in the world is because they have learned how to push through their comfort zones. Those are the people we write about. Those are the leaders we follow. But everybody, even those leaders, probably had fear. I don't even got to say probably. They've had fear. They've had resistance. They didn't feel like doing it. And guess what? The fact that they did it doesn't mean they got rid of the resistance. It means that they were able to work through the resistance. And how do you work through resistance? There's no other way to work through resistance other than to do the work. Because what you need to do is tell your brain that it's safe for you to do hard things. Our bodies are so magnificently created by our creator that they're set up to protect us. Our bodies are set up to work with us. But sometimes we need to tell ourselves, we need to prove to our own brains that even when I go through doors that seem scary and hard to open, I'm going to be okay on the other side. The other truth that you have to start realizing in your life is that even if I make the wrong decision, I can recover. So many of people watching this live, listening to this podcast, know they need to step out on faith, know they need to make some decisions, but they're so scared of making the wrong decision that it is easier not to make any decision at all. But guess what? Time feeds anything Time amplifies anything that you feed it. So this decade's worth of negative thinking, not doing, not taking the risks, not being like being sed sedentary, that is going to amplify over time. Any parents on the line? Tell me there's some parents. If you're a parent on the line, put parents in the chat. <laughs> put parents in the chat. And yes, if you know someone needs this, share this video out. Let them know we live. We, we going live. We ain't been live in a minute. And Demaya didn't set it off with this dope question. Here's what I want the parent. It's a lot of parents on the chat. Uh-oh. Look, look, y'all. Let me tell y'all something. Your life is a blueprint for your kids. It's one that they can choose to follow or not. But when you as a parent open heavy doors, you are showing your kids that it's okay to step out on faith. When you as a parent open heavy doors, you are showing your kids it's okay to step out on faith. You're showing your kids it's okay to be bold. You're showing your kids it's okay to desire something that the rest of society tells you you can't have and you can still be successful. It is critically important that we don't pass down fear as the legacy that we're leaving our children. It is critically important that we pass down faith. Now I'm saying this because there are some of you that literally put yourself last on every list. And I know it because I already know my people. <laughs> there are some of you that put yourself last on every list. So I'm framing it in this way because for my parents out there, I know that no matter what fears you have, you do not want to leave a legacy of fear to your kids. So you, it is critically important that you as a parent crush, you take away the power of fear to keep you from walking in your purpose. Because you know what you do? You pass down fear to your kids. Some people don't leave their kids any money. What they leave them is fear, doubt, and inconsistency. We're done with that. We're done with that. The first day I looked into my daughter's eyes, I was like, I'm not raising a scary woman. I'm not raising a scary woman. When my daughter asked questions, I was like, yeah, let's let's answer the question. Let's teach her that her voice matters. When she speaks up and wants to be in conversations, we're going to include her in conversations. The truth of the matter is some of us have a harder time because our parents pass down fear to us. Now, the reason I am standing here today telling you don't pass down fear to your kids, don't pass down doubt to your kids is because I saw my parents push through doors. They said they couldn't open. I remember being a little bitty girl 
seeing my mom going back to college. I don't think I was that young. I was young, but I wasn't that young. I remember seeing her go back to college. Then I remember her coming home saying, hey, I'm going to go and get my MBA. I remember her starting at her job as a secretary, working her way up to senior project manager and winning the president's award for the largest insurance company in the world. Like I remember her doing that while being a first lady of a church while being a wife to my dad of over 20 years, while being a great mom to us, while cooking. But my dad had to start cooking too when she was doing all of this. Like, I remember her setting boundaries with my dad. I remember her telling me when I was dating, when a little boy told me if I didn't date him, he was going to harm himself and all this stuff. I remember her telling me, don't you let anybody manipulate you at 13. I remember those talks. I remember what it looks like for a woman to walk through doors of fear and be okay on the other side. So what you're teaching your kids is that you have to teach your kids that fear is a feeling that you can feel and you can move with it. You don't have to get rid of it. So many of us have been taught like, oh, I got to get rid of fear before I move. Fear may never go away. That feeling of, I don't know if I could do, that doesn't go away. What happens is you get better at moving with it. You get better at moving through it. And the things that used to scare you don't scare you anymore. But then there may be new things that bring up feelings of fear right? Let's talk about this. Because I had a dad in my life too. And I remember him telling the story of how his mom wasn't able to take care of him. His dad was drinking alcohol. He was in the Robert Taylor homes, the projects of Chicago. I remember him saying how he had to walk up all these stairs and he saw all this stuff he shouldn't have seen as a kid. I know that he went from that environment to building his own seven figure business. Like I remember those stories. I remember him saying how he dealt with racist bosses that he had people that didn't look like him that told him he wasn't ever going to be anything. But I also remember him saying that there were some people who didn't look like him that were able to take him to places that he may not have been able to get to on his own, that were able to give him some insight and some knowledge. So what he taught me was it doesn't matter how people look. It doesn't matter what people do. There is no person bigger than God. Any believers on the line, people who believe in Jesus Christ, any believe, just put believer if you're a believer, because we got to deal with this too. We're going to approach this on a variety of different fronts because I really want y'all to get this this morning. Believers, any Christians, faith-based folks. Okay, let's see. Here's the thing, guys. The most dangerous thing you can do is to proclaim to the world that you have faith in a God that is bigger than everything, but you don't believe you can do anything. Can I repeat that back? The most dangerous thing you can do is say that you believe in a God who is capable and who has created everything, but you don't believe you can do anything. The way I read my Bible is that God left us the Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of us, which means that I am powerful too. If you have power on the inside of you, you don't have to approach what you're afraid of the same because it's not even in my own strength. It's in his. So I want God to put his super on my natural. Now, here's where I believe we get it a little bit twisted, a little bit twisted. And for those of you who aren't Christians, just insert your own faith here. You know what it is. But like, here's where I think we get it twisted. I've always told myself, I want God to put his super on my natural. But what's my natural? Well, my natural is I'm going to study to show myself approved. That's scriptural. I'm going to be consistent in my work. Whatever I put my hands to, it will prosper. If I get a hundred dollars, that a hundred dollars shouldn't retain the same value. Like I should be able to grow that amount. That's my natural. Now, what I believe the power of the Lord has been able to do in my life is put his super on my natural. So while I'm being consistent, opportunities and doors are opening. While I'm being consistent, people are able to see a different side of themselves through what I say. His super on my natural is like, I may prepare for a speech, but if there's other things that need to be said, because I feel the need to say some other things, I need God to lead me in that. But the natural part, allow being prepared in the natural allows me not to be so scared that I am not able to operate in the super. Are y'all with me on that? Because so many people aren't even able to access or operate (laughs) in a supernatural way because they ain't prepared in the natural. You know what I mean? Like they're not, you ain't handling the natural, but you want, miracles and supernatural things to happen and open clouds to open. I'm like, girl, you. I mean, you ain't doing the, <laughs> where is the natural discipline? Where is the natural discipline? We have the power to train our brains how best to serve us in this life. But it starts with identifying negative thoughts. What's so powerful about your question that you asked earlier, Demaya, is that and if anyone else has any questions, drop them in the chat or on Instagram, use the question box. But it, the, the most powerful thing about your question is you've identified my thinking hasn't served me up to this point. 
that heightened level of awareness will help you then to identify when a negative thought comes about something you know you need to be doing, you can do it. You can do it. You can move through it because you know that thought hasn't served you in the past. So just logically, I got to move through that thought. I'm not a fan of getting rid of all fear, getting rid of all doubt. The truth of the matter is you can reimagine what resistance means. For me, when I feel that resistance, it's like, I know I got to do it. It's something, it's a blessing in that. If I move forward with, I'm, I'm feeling resistance in this area, I got to do it because I know there's a blessing in that. Whenever I felt resistance in my life, it has been, a there's been a reason for that. Now, check this out. <laughs> your discernment, your ability to decipher what opportunities are good, what opportunities are bad, what people are good, what people you should probably refrain from being around, only strengthens when you take action. It only strengthens when you take action. So I got some people who feel like, well, my discernment told me I shouldn't be doing that. And I feel I gotta, I feel like I shouldn't be doing it. So I know I shouldn't be doing it. Discernment for me has been helpful in determining whether my feelings were playing tricks on me or whether there's something good in that. Like you, you gotta get good at figuring out what path to take. That only comes from you, one, learning yourself really well, identifying opportunities and identifying the trends in your life. You got to know when it's fear telling you to stop doing something and when you need to look at that fear in the eye and say, move out the way I'm doing this. You can come with, but you ain't going to stop no show. So the, these are the things that we have to deal with. These are the things that we have to deal with. And I'll tell you, <laughs> whatever you sow, you reap. Whatever you sow, you reap. And over the course of my life, that has been, that has been so apparent. That has been so apparent. When I'm investing my money, I am reaping more money. When I'm investing my time in a particular relationship, I am reaping more time from that individual. A big problem that I see is people want to reap where they haven't sown. Like we get emails all the time, like, hey, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. And it's like, depending on what that person, is, like, it's all about, you need to live your life in a manner that signals to your future what you want. If I want good relationships, I got to invest in good relationships. I have to spend time to develop good relationships. If you want more money in your future, well, then you got to look at where you're investing your money. Because if you're like this, you're not getting anything in and nothing's coming out. There are a lot of people who are like, I want something, but they won't put any of their treasures into it. And there are three, time, money, and talent. You're not investing no time in nobody. Don't expect nobody to give you time. You're not investing your talent towards a particular thing. Do not expect to be able to recruit and retain exceptional talent. You're not investing your money in getting better and in developing yourself. Do not expect to be reaping a harvest in your money. Time, talent, and Trevor, treasure. Where is it being invested? Where is it being invested? Now, y'all know I'm a big investor. Like, I love investing in the right things. I've joined so many coaching programs, personal development programs. I was just at a conference. I invest in my marketing. I invest in my clients' experiences. I spend, and let me, when I say invest, I'm talking about, all. Oh, I invest my time, I invest my talent, and I invest my money. In every area of my life where I expect to see growth, I'm investing all three of those things. And let me tell you this, because I was thinking about this earlier. There's so much on the internet about, well, I, and I'm, I'm just going to be honest about something. There are like entire YouTube channels dedicated to like, I invested my money with this person and they didn't give me what I was supposed to get in. Da, 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 da. Okay. I've never made an investment and not gotten something out of it. I've never made an investment and not gotten a return on my investment. And I'll tell you why. I imagine returns in three ways. I can get people, I can get money, or I can get knowledge. Let me break that down. If I invest in a coaching program and all I get is two new friendships, great. And not just friendships two new professional relationships. I meet two people that I can go and do business with in the future. I can go and spend time with in the future. I can collaborate in the future. Great. Money. I learn one strategy that I can implement and make more money with in the future. Great. But the other thing, the other thing is like people are looking at return on their investment far too narrowly and in a very short period of time. It's like, well, if I invest $500 right now, I need to get $500 tomorrow. Between now and tomorrow, what talent are you investing in making that your in making your money back? Number one, it's never served me to be a complainer. It's not that your complaints aren't valid. It's just that I don't get an ROI on it. So for me, you probably won't see me doing a big expose on exposure and this. And like maybe, maybe there's time for that, right? Like 
big company does something really bad. We sue, we do a whole thing. Like maybe there's time for that. But for the most part, time feeds anything you feed it. And if the vast majority of your time is spent complaining about investments you've made where you didn't get a return, I can almost guarantee people like that spent more time complaining about the investment than implementing and learning from the investor. Because let me tell you this, if you sold me into something, you know at least enough to sell me and I need to learn more about that. So to be real, I ain't losing no money on no investment. You know, I've done programs where it's like, oh, it, this wasn't exactly what I thought, but still I met people that were incredible money back. But still I learned at least one new skill. Knowledge is a big one. Did I come in knowing more then when, like, if I joined your program and I learn more going in than I have coming out, boom, that's a win. And let me tell you something else. Be very cautious listening to people telling you what not to invest in. And I know this from personal experience. Can I be real about something? I'm going to just, I don't, I may have to take this down because I'm being too real. I don't know if it's going to make it to the podcast. We'll see. If it's on the podcast and you listen to it, then that means we kept it up. There was a program that I wanted to join several years ago. And there were several people that were like, not join this program blah, 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 because of their own personal experiences. And everybody's person, everyone's experience is valid, right? Do you want to know the difference between different people in a coaching program? Their interpretation of the information. I'm in so, I'm, I've been in so, I've been in probably I've been in so many programs, taking so many courses. I will take the same course as somebody else and get completely radically, radically different results. Radically, like it ain't even close. And the reason for that is my interpretation of the information is different. Some people go into things with a chip on their shoulder. And I'll tell you, they told me not to join all this stuff. I told Chris, I was like, I don't know, babe. I think we need to join. Like we need to just go ahead and do this thing. Best investment. Like, it paid off because there were some things that we learned that we've been able to immediately implement and get 10, 20 X returns on some people we needed to meet that because we've met, it makes so many things easier. Some, some spaces we needed to be in around other people that have just made life so much easier. So I say this to say when somebody is personally offended by something, their perspective on something may not be right. And this is where discernment comes in. You know yourself. You know that if you go and get good information, you're going to implement it. You know that you can get in rooms and meet people and develop strong lasting bonds. You know who you are. I'm going to just go there with y'all this morning because I haven't been live in a minute. We're going to talk about this one, this one other concept. There are some people, I was talking to my friend about this and I was telling her, there are some people that I don't think are strong enough to be coached. I was like, I don't, I don't think everybody's strong enough to be coached. Because if you're, here's what I mean by that. One, I think coaching is critical and important. But what I'm about to say is really important too. So I want you to take heed to this. If you're someone who loves it, you got a good coach, you want to make sure you get in your full investment, listen in, listen up. This is going to be good. Your coach's job is to give you the best information available to them at the time. That is their job. They are supposed to give you the information they promised that they would give you, but coaches are in the information giving business. They are supposed to challenge you to pull out the best in you, but they do not replace your brain. That means there is not a coach on this planet that can make me change my vision because they don't have the insight into my vision to get me to change it. Now, they can give me the strategies to help bring that vision to life and make the vision become realized faster, quicker, more efficiently but it is not their job to get me to change my vision. What this means is if a coach gives me advice that goes against my vision for the business that God has put on the inside of me, that me and the team have agreed upon, then that means that I need to disregard that aspect of the coaching. It doesn't mean they can't give me no advice. They gave me this one bad advice and da 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 That's stupid. That ain't what it means. It means they don't know, they don't have enough insight into the vision. But as long as you have insight into your vision, you're clear on what the vision for your life is. If a coach tells you something that's outside of alignment, you can disregard it. But you got to be careful and have enough discernment to know whether or not you're disregarding their advice because it scares you or whether you're disregarding their advice because it's outside of alignment with your vision. If you don't have a vision, if you don't know where you're going, then you're going to enter a coaching space and be thrown everywhere. Like, you're like, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. No, 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 no. What's your vision? Why is that the vision? What parts of that can change? What parts of that cannot? What parts of that cannot? What parts of it can grow? And this is why it's important to, here's how you get good at clarifying your vision, clarifying who you are in essence, knowing what you should take, knowing what you shouldn't take. 
walking through heavy doors, pushing back on doors of fear. Because if you know that anything that scares you, you won't do, you clam up, it won't work. We have over time as a company gotten better at knowing what to take and what to leave because we know that even when we're scared of something, we're open-minded enough to new ideas and new concepts to consider them. And if we don't do them, we won't let fear be the reason. If we don't do them, we try not to let fear be the reason because everyone makes mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. One of the biggest mistakes I made was listening to the advice of people who weren't where I wanted to be about what I should be doing. And to be clear, I do believe that you can learn from absolutely anyone wherever, no matter where they're at in life. But I don't believe you should put yourself in, in spaces to be heavily influenced by people who aren't living a life you want to live. I just don't. I just don't believe in that. I believe you could like, I can learn from anyone. I could be walking down the street. Somebody on the street could say something. I can learn from it. Absolutely. Does that mean I'm going to go give them money for me to be coached by them? Absolutely not. Because there's a level of access that I need to protect and guard. It is here. The Speak Your Way to Cash book is now available for you to purchase. Go to Amazon to get your audio, Kindle, or hardcover copy of the book. And we have a paperback copy, okay? So you can get it on Audible and listen to it. And I read it myself. So if you love the podcast, you will love the audio book. Go get it now. Speak Your Way to Cash, how to start at the top of the speaking market instead of working your way up from the bottom. A bit about the book. It's broken down into six parts and it is over 260 pages of goodness, okay? Part one covers mindset. Part two covers getting yourself in the press. Part three covers assembling your six-figure offer. Part four covers inviting people to work with you. Ahem, sales. Part five covers delivering an outstanding speech. And part six covers legalities that every speaker needs and how to build a team. I mean, literally, what did we leave out? Nothing. So go to Amazon and grab your copy today. And let me know you did it too. So I love coaching. I think everyone should have uh, several coaches. I also feel that a lot of people get caught up because they only have one coach. They think one person's supposed to give them everything. I've invested with so many coaches. It don't even matter to me. Like, it's like, and people are like, oh my gosh, I mean, you spent 20 grand on that. I mean, you spent, what if that? I heard this about them and I heard that and I heard da da da, da. Did you hear? And, and here's the other thing. Get good at asking good questions because the person that told me not to invest with this particular person, I asked them a very simple question. I was like, did the information that they provided to you help you make money? Did they provide good information? Oh, well, they did provide good information, but it was just, you know, I didn't really like how they made me feel when they said that. Da, 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 da. Feelings aside, because feelings are an unreliable leader and they are for sure a very bad master. They are an unreliable leader and a very bad master. Get good at asking the critical questions, because for me, like in my program, I teach sales and marketing to companies. It is impossible for it not to work. Show me a business where sales and marketing don't work. It ain't rocket science. Like, that's what I teach. It works. I join programs that teach very clear things. How to get more traffic. Well, duh, that works. You need more traffic to your offers. Like, most of this stuff isn't rocket science. The way that people deliver information is what makes it a little bit more persuasive or not. But it's not rocket science. So when you're sitting at home and you try, and I always use the ads example because I remember when I first started my business, I would run ads and I'd be like, I spent $5 a day. It didn't work. Obviously, ads work. How can I say advertisement doesn't work? That was so ignorant. It's like, duh, advertisement works. You didn't work the advertisement, but advertisement works. It's the same with what I teach. I teach how to pitch companies. Clearly that works. It's like, come on guys. Like, let's be real here. Let's be real here. This works. This works. All right. Another question. I have three to six great ideas that I want to realize but I get overwhelmed by trying to split time amongst all of them is having several visions the same as having no vision. Ooh, these questions are fire. All right, let's clear up this vision thing. When I say you should have a vision, in the beginning, I'm not talking about like, if I don't have a well-written owl, it's perfectly crystal clear. I know exactly where I'm gonna be in 10 years. I'm not talking about that. I should clarify. What I'm saying is like, I know that I am put on this earth to impact people with my voice. That is a loose vision. So if someone were to give me advice as a coach that was like, you know, Ashley, all that going live, all that speaking on stages, that's not what you're supposed to do. God told me you're not called to do that. I'd be like, that's cap. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know that's not the fact of the matter. Now, that's the big vision. I have coaching to help me to figure out strategically what marketing methods should I be using to get the maximum impact on that vision? So you need a loose vision, like, you know, something that is your guiding light. Like, you know, for a fact, you're supposed, you're supposed to impact people in X way. You may not know how to do it. You may not know, like, exactly who the people are. 
that's not it. But you need to know enough about who you are, where if something says, some, if someone tells you to do something that's so off base to who you are as a person, then you know to be like, I ain't doing that. Like, I'm not going to get caught up in that. Now, the other question, overwhelm is a really, it's really prevalent right now because of the the pandemic. 74% of people who go into their jobs every day are thinking about leaving their jobs. 74%. Over 4 million people month over month since the pandemic, since some months in the pandemic have actually started leaving their job month over month. We have 8 million open jobs over, or we have 13 million open jobs. I think 8 million actual people who are able to like work these 8 million that are unemployed. It's like there's way more jobs than there are people that are unemployed. So right now, a lot of people are overwhelmed. A lot of people want to do a lot of different things. And for most people, this is the first time they're even allowing themselves to think about all the things they want to do. Here's what I recommend. Number one, what's bringing in money now? That's what you got to protect first. I don't recommend people leave their job unless they have some cash to sit on. When I left my job, we had a year's worth of expenses. We had 60K in cash. Plus, my husband was still working his job. So I didn't leave like, I, I didn't leave and I was like, I got to hurry up and sell all these people because if I don't, then I'm not going to make my rent. Like the reason I don't believe people should ever put themselves in that type of a situation is because desperation repels sales and it attracts the wrong people. It attracts the wrong people. So I'm never going to sell from a desperate place. And let me tell you this, desperation has nothing to do with what's in your bank account. You can have nothing in your bank account and still show up fully and powerfully and not be in a desperate place. That's a mindset. So that's number one. Number two, write down all your ideas, figure out which one's going to bring in money, figure out which one you're going to tackle first. Give yourself six months to go hard on that one idea. Six months to go hard on that one idea. And you need to define what going hard is. How will you show up every single day for that idea? A lot of people are multi-passionate. A lot of people are. What you need is a plan. You need a plan. This is where coaching comes in because coaching allows you to tell them all your ideas and they suggest a plan. Then when they suggest that plan, what you have to do, knowing who you are, is say, okay, of these things, I don't have the capacity to implement all of them, but I can implement one, two, and three, and I'm going to do a consistency for consistently for six months straight. What I see is that people aren't consistent and they don't go hard enough for an extended period of time. And they can't, they can't quantify going hard. They're like, I've been trying, quantify trying. Somebody put quantify trying in the chat. I need you to quantify trying. Because when I talk to people about what I'm doing on the corporate side of my business, it's very clear. We pitch 100 new companies a day via LinkedIn. We send out one email every day to our email list on the coaching side. We run ads. We've spent $12,500 in the last seven days on advertising on Facebook. Quantify trying. Because when you quantify trying, so once I have all these numbers, this is what I've done. And I look at my results and my results aren't where I need them to be. I can go back to that quantify of, I can go back to me quantifying trying and I can say, okay, I'm going to double these efforts to try to double these results. And sometimes what you realize is your going hard isn't good enough. I don't know why we don't want to say that. I know that right now, like, Everything on, like I see, because I'm a, I'm a woman in business, in case y'all didn't know. I identify as a woman in business. So here's what they tell us, ladies. Can I just say what they tell us? <laughs> what they tell us in business is like, be a woman, go in the corner, drink some water, be at peace. Everything you want will just come to you naturally and organically and you'll be attracted to it. But you want to know how they're sending us those messages in an ad, in a reel, in a marketing vehicle. Oh, but I thought I'm supposed to sit in the corner and let it all come to me with peace. It don't work. Like, can we be real about this? Sometimes you need to put in work. Sometimes the work you're putting in just isn't enough. That's why you're not getting the results that you want. Let me be the one to tell it to you because I'm going to always give it to you straight. The fact of the matter is every time I have had some level of success, when I got bad grades in college, I wasn't studying enough. When I went to law school and studied and wrote a whole book on literally how to study in law school, the law school hustle, I wrote the book on how to do well in law school, got all A's and a couple of B pluses, graduated Northwestern Law with honors. Well, what changed? I worked harder. I had flashcards. I had flashcards in my pocket. When I was in the car, I was running flashcards. Me and Chris had to have date nights. Well, before date nights, he was doing flashcards with me. People told me in law school, well, most people go to law school and they lose their husband because it's just so hard. What I told them was, I will not be losing my husband while I'm in law school because I have boundaries and priorities. So I didn't see a lot of other people outside of Chris and my church family and my law school friends. Boundaries and priorities. Was it hard? Yeah, because I had to learn how to tell people I liked, you can't have my time today. 
So many of you are overwhelmed and overworked because you don't have boundaries or priorities. Can I hang out with you? Well, let me look at my boundaries and priorities. Boundary says no, priority says no, it's a no. Boundary says maybe, priority says no, it's a no. Like, what are you trying to achieve in this season? And I get it, because let me tell you something. I would love to win the lottery too. But my husband told me yesterday, one of the biggest issues in our community is that there is this lotto mentality. This I could put in 5%, but I could reap 500. That mentality is a trick. And what did we say earlier? Time magnifies anything you feed it. What that type of a thinking does, I'm going to put in $500 and I'm going to get back $5 million. That thinking, what that thinking does, you want to know what it does? It tricks you into becoming entitled to results you haven't worked for. That mentality tricks you into becoming entitled for results you haven't worked for. People are like, man, your event was so successful. We spent six figures on it. So yeah, we reap multiple six figures from it. We've invested multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars in coaching and courses and learning. I've invested over 10,000 hours in reading and writing and getting good at stuff and learning. So yes, I'm able to teach it, but I don't allow my entitlement to trick me into thinking I deserve so many things I haven't worked for. I haven't put in the work for. You want to change your mindset? You need to work on your mind. I'm sorry to be the one to tell y'all this. And I'm sorry to give you this news on a Friday. It may mean you need to work over the weekend. But the truth of the matter is a lot of people are very big on like, oh, but I'm overwhelmed. And I'm this and I'm that. And I'm this and I'm that. No, 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 no. You wouldn't be overwhelmed if you had stronger boundaries, clearer priority. Stronger boundaries, clearer priorities. Because your boundaries and your priorities dictate or should dictate where your time goes. Someone said, this is like a shot of espresso this morning. <laughs> Look, okay, can we be honest about it? Because especially to my sisters, there is a message out there. I see it every day. There's women all online like, I ain't dating no man unless he, got, unless he make at least multiple six figures because I'm everything. I got all of this and I need a man that's going to do all of that. And it's like, but sis, what are you bringing to the table? Whenever you approach anything, business or personal relationships from the mindset of they better go ahead and give me all of this because I'm everything. I'm this. First off, you need to accept the universal truth that there is no perfect person walking this planet. The second thing for my women who are dating and all of that, you need to accept another truth that if you aren't looking at what you don't have, what you aren't bringing to the table, it's going to be very hard to magnify what you do have. It's very possible that you're overstating your ability to be a great partner. Just consider the fact that you're not perfect too, right? That's personal relationships. Well, how does that apply to business? The same thing. It's the same thing. Like this notion that we have that we have to put out perfect content, perfect emails, perfect this, perfect that. You know where that comes from? That comes from us being overly critical of other people because we criticize other people so harshly. We're deathly afraid of putting out anything because we're scared we're going to get the exact same criticism that we have sown into the world. It's a seed. You being hypercritical, that's a seed. That's why you can't put out emails because you're afraid of a typo. Because every time somebody got a typo, you the first one, you typo police. That's why you can't put out anything. You're scared to ask people to come to your events and invest with you because you know you ain't invested in nobody else's stuff. You can't price over $2,500 because you ain't never paid over $2,500 for anything. It's a seed. Everything we do is a seed. And every word you speak over yourself is a prayer. Every word you, see, you speak over yourself is a prayer. Well, I'm cheap. Okay, you're also broke. It's a prayer. Like, stop calling yourself cheap, broke. I ain't got it. I ain't never gonna get no man. I ain't never gonna grow this business. This is so hard. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so... You need to start speaking prayers over your life. And, and imagine, this is something my dad says, imagine that every word you speak will inevitably come true. What would you say? What if every word out of your mouth was considered a prayer and heaven granted everything you said about yourself? And what if everything you said about other people was a prayer too and you were just speaking that over yourself? How would you criticize then? I always know where someone's going based on how they treat people who they think have more than them. Catch that. People always dogging out celebrities, sharing people's personal moments for their own likes and clicks or to sell their own silly courses and stuff. Do you know why that's foolish? It tells me that you don't ever plan to have massive influence because if you did, you'd have more empathy for people who already got it. Oh, she ain't all that. Look at her. Ooh, that, that, this is fake. That, that is fake. It's a prayer. I can tell you don't plan to have massive influence by the way you talk about people who you perceive as having it. I can tell you don't plan to ever acquire wealth by the way you overly criticize those you consider to be wealthy now. 
You want to know why you can't attract high value, high quality, super educated, really brilliant clients? Because you're always downplaying people who are actually smart because you're scared that they may be smarter than you. People you're criticizing, you probably could be learning from, but you're not open-minded enough for that conversation. Can we just be real this morning? Can we just be real? Come on. Care about Will and Jada? I mean, those people, I, you know, look, <laughs> be careful who you put your mouth on. People posting about Will and Jada, all these negative things. But in a minute, if Will Smith were to call them to do anything, they'd be bending over backwards saying it was a blessing from God. But you just put your mouth on them people. Let's be real. Let's be real clear about this. I expect unimaginable things to happen in my life. So good, I can't even imagine them right now. And so I have to operate as if that's coming down the pipeline. So some posts I want to make, I don't make. Some people I don't really agree with, I don't even bash publicly. There are so many things I have been through with certain individuals that I will never talk about publicly because I expect unimaginable blessing. I expect to be so blown away by the results of my work, my natural with God, supernatural. Like I expect so many incredible things to happen in my life, in this lifetime. While I'm alive, that I shouldn't, I will not dare ruin the blessings I have coming down the pipeline because I want to be petty. Come on, people. Come on. Posting pictures of women, women with they, they stuff out. They didn't look good at the Walmart because you want to get some likes. What are we doing here? We Let me tell you something. Our culture has devolved to a point where negativity gets more likes than positivity. This is a positive video. We got some likes going. We got some viewers here. But if this video were entitled, um, so-and-so was a scam, tell all, we would have thousands of people here. And I know it to be the case because there was a time when I had a breakdown. I had a real deal breakdown. And it was like, I was online. It was like, I was crying. And it was like a breakdown. And that video got the most likes out of all the videos. I have hundreds of videos where it's all positivity, no drama, whatever. No one shares that, right? But like a breakdown, or some people do, appreciate y'all, shout out. <laughs> but when it's a breakdown video, when something's negative, spreads like wildfire. Old colleagues calling me, everybody got a prayer and a thought to send in the DM. Let me be very clear. Substance will never go out of style because the fact of the matter is, as long as you keep putting in the work to get better at your craft, you keep trying, you keep putting in your efforts, it is only a matter of time before it pays off because your trajectory has to be up. Time feeds anything or time magnifies anything that you feed it. Don't take my word for it. James Clear, author of Atomic Habits, 7 million copies sold, said this when we were speaking at a conference. We both were speaking at the same conference. And that's another thing. I spoke at the same conference as a New York Times bestseller, 7 million copies sold. I was able to watch him on stage and all it did was motivate me that I'm that much closer to where I'm supposed to be. I actually took a screenshot of, I wrote down all of the stats on what his book has done. 7 million copies sold, New York Times bestseller, five books in the queue. I was like, okay, God, well, if you had me see this, it must be because there's a New York Times bestseller in our spirit. It must be because we got seven million copies about to be sold of our current or our next book. It must be because I'm supposed to be in the room. Some of you walk into rooms and you're looking for all these reasons why you shouldn't be there. You're sitting in the back. You're not speaking up. You're like, I don't know if I should be here. You should be there. Nobody, you're not seeing nothing by mistake, y'all. You're not seeing anything by mistake. You're not reading words of encouragement or watching this video by mistake. You're doing it because you're supposed to hear it because you're supposed to go further faster. And the reason you join communities like Speak Your Way to Cash and you come to events like Speak Your Way to Cash is because what I know is that people who work with me leave with more confidence. They, they can take that to the bank for the rest of their lives. I also know in our environments, they are custom designed to stretch you to think bigger than you've ever thought before. That's what they're designed to do. And I know that because my dad was a dreamer. I didn't grow up with the parents that I grew up with for them to impart all this confidence in me, for me not to impart all this confidence into you. God don't set stuff up like that. I was supposed to be raised by the parents I was raised by to give you all what you're hearing today, to have you all come to Speak Your Way to Cash Live and get your lives together, to have you all join our communities and our summits. And like, it, nothing is by mistake. 
But if you're not feeding yourself positivity, if you're not in a community with positivity, it won't work. One of the things that James Clear said that I thought was so powerful as well was that he's seen people develop good habits, but he's never seen those good habits sustain in a bad environment. Either they change the environment or they leave the environment to keep those good habits. If you stay in an environment where this ain't the conversation, where people aren't calling you up, where people aren't calling you to be accountable, where people aren't telling you the truth of the matter, where people aren't stretching your mind, those good habits will not sustain. Now, there are some of you who are like, well, what do I do? I'm in a household with people that don't believe what I believe. I'm married to somebody who isn't working hard. I'm married to somebody who ain't going, you know, they don't want to work. They don't want to do the things. What do I do to keep my good habits when I'm not in an environment that I need to be in? You control your environment. It's in here. When I first started entrepreneurship, my husband was not working with the company. He was not like, oh, yeah, babe, go do that thing. He was like, what are you doing on the Internet all day? Like, what is happening? Why are you going live talking to these people? What's going on? Every day I woke up, I listened to podcasts, positive podcasts all day, every day. I didn't watch TV. I was listening to, I mean, during work hours. Like, I wasn't during work hours. I definitely watch TV. I'm not one of those people like, I do not have a TV in my house. I do. But when I was working, what got me up and motivated, I would go get dressed listening to a podcast. I would go and you can listen. The Speaker Ready Cash podcast has 150 episodes. Like it's a good start. <laughs> it's a good, that's 150 hours. A lot of them are hour long. So I'd listen to podcasts. I would read books. I joined Facebook groups. I asked questions in those Facebook groups. I joined coaching programs. I hosted my own meetups. I used to have Christian meetups for entrepreneurs. I used to do office hours with me. I would like whatever it took for me to get in an environment with people who at least desired more. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It's not. But watch your conversation. Another thing is, if you're married, explain it to your spouse in a way that they they could get on board with. Give them time. It's a whole new world for you. It's a whole, whole new world for them, especially if they used to you bringing home a check every two weeks. So change your environment in that way. Okay, I got some announcements. Number one, if you enjoyed this, share it. Sharing is caring. Number two, if you are a speaker, expert, entrepreneur, or thought leader, I want you to come to the Speaker Ready Cash Online Summit. It's our first time doing it. We have over 10 plus speakers that I'll be interviewing about their journeys. We're covering things like how to land college clients, how to land your first five-figure licensing deal, what that looks like, how to 10X your speaking rate, how to, like, we have all of these different topics that we're going to be covering over two days. You want to show up live. Give yourself two days and show up live. We started 9 a.m. on the 27th, 9 a.m. on the 28th. You want to be there. Go to www.speakyourwaytocashsummit.com and get a VIP ticket. Like y'all, we are introducing you all to powerhouses. We are not charging for the summit. The VIP is like $47 and you get the replays. Now, if you don't get the VIP during this period of time, like if you don't get it before the summit, during the summit, that goes to $99. After the summit, that goes to $200. So you want to make sure you are getting your VIP ticket now. Also, when you buy the VIP before the summit, you actually get to attend a VIP session the first night of the summit only for VIP. So I'm excited about that. We have almost 80 VIPs. We got to get that up to at least 200 people. So you want to be there. I'm going to look now. I'm about to look now and see how many how many people we have registered for the summit. Hopefully we've crossed the 1,000 mark at this point. Yep, 1,053. Boom. And then VIPs, we got 83. So let's go on and get that to 100 with those of you all that are on there. I will be at the summit. Speaker Ready Cash is amazing. Yes, VJ. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. So you want to come to the summit. That's my first announcement. My second announcement is, if you're watching this and you are a speaker who's like, look, I already make a little bit of money speaking. I'm already doing well in my business. I already have a really good corporate job. I want to leverage my expertise and I'm serious about it. I'm ready to make a real investment in it. Then I want you to apply to join the next three-month cohort of the Speaker Ready Cash Academy. Applications are now open. You can apply at Speak Your Way. Let me get the exact link because we do, we do a private training on the 28th for those that are interested in applying or you can dm me and i'll give it to you i think it's speakyourwaytocash.com slash apply now so put in www.speakyourwaytocash.com slash apply now to apply for that next three-month cohort it is a five-figure investment to join our academy so just keep that in mind. Like, this is really for people who are like, I'm ready to monetize it for real. We go over their six-figure proposals. They get feedback from me every week. Like, it's a whole vibe. It's a great program. You should join. So any more announcements? Any more announcements? No, no more announcements. If you're not on our email list, you should be. That's easy. You can just go to speakerreadycash.com, click connect with Ashley, join the email list. That's easy. But right now, for sure, if you register for the summit, you'll be added to the list. So make sure you go and register for that summit. It's coming up next week, www 
speakyourwaytocashsummit.com. And I will see you there. But if this was good, share it out. Share it out. We want as many people as possible to get this espresso shot this morning. I will probably be live a little bit more as well, just to give you guys some more encouragement. But like, be encouraged. Be encouraged. You can do this. You will do this. You can overcome feelings of overwhelm. You can work through feelings of fear. There is nothing on this planet that can stop you but you. Your biggest, your biggest critic is you. Your biggest champion is you. And the great, the great thing about having negative thoughts is those also come from you, which means you can change those too. All right. Thank you again. My name is Ashley Kirkwood with Speak Your Way to Cash. We help speakers land five and six figure corporate speaking contracts, get the tools necessary to do that. We have over 1,000 paying speaking clients in the Speak Your Way to Cash community. So please do join us. We have a Speak Your Way to Cash podcast, a Speak Your Way to Cash free Facebook group, and various Speak Your Way to Cash resources all linked at www.speakyourwaytocash.com. Talk to y'all later. All right. Wasn't that interview amazing? If you're anything like me, you have pages full of notes. But here's the thing. Before you head out, I want you to go to facebook.com and... Join the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group. That is where I am. That's where a ton of other speakers are, a ton of other people who listen to the show. All We all congregate there and chat. And it's 100% free. Now, if you're ready to take your speaking career to the next level, I have two ways for you to do that. One, you can go to ashleynicolekirkwood.com slash SYWTC live replay and pick up the live replay. That training is seven modules, chock full of information. It's crazy. Go over there, read all about it. Or if you want a more personal experience, you're already, you already know that you want to be a speaker. You're ready to fully commit and you want someone to walk you through it and save you tons of time Googling and doing it on your own. Then book a VIP day with me. You can go to AshleyNicoleKirkwood.com. Scroll down until you see the VIP day section and get more information on that there. All right. Thank you guys again for watching. Please do not forget to leave us a review. That is how we keep this train rolling and get some of the best speakers in the world to get on this show. So please, please, please leave a review. Shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram and Facebook in the Speaker Way to Cash group, Instagram at, at the Ashley Nicole Show. And I'd be more than happy to chat with you and say hi. All right, y'all have an awesome, awesome day. <laughs>